<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to as our first episode back. Uh, our season one, season five, episode one of Papa Don't Preach. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I um I've been trying to duck your text messages, but we did a show <laughs> together, so I finally had to come back. We worked together. I was like, hey man, you're like, oh god. Oh, god. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> <laughs> No, I uh, I love doing this. I miss doing this. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, man, it's glad to have you back. Uh, it's I, been uh, like the fire hazard you guys put in here. Yeah, don't don't mention the fire hazard. <laughs> Definitely not up to code. <laughs> As uh, a lot of you guys listening at home, not watching, we actually got a new set. We're very proud of. And yeah. What do you think? It looks sharp. It looks like, uh, like I was going uh, for you know successful dad. It definitely looks it looks like <laughs> you went for successful, got recently divorced dad. Yeah, it's like about to lose the house dad. <laughs> <laughs> like you got to see it on the other side. It's just like all the boxes of my clothes and a treadmill I'm never going to use. Yeah, just turn off <laughs> social media dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, you know, we've been... Uh, it's been like three months. We had like three months off. Yeah. Three months off, 90 days. Obviously, nothing happened, no. but uh, we'll get to that later. But because I haven't seen you in so long, how, how's everything going? How how you been? What's, uh, what's you new? Know, just doing usual stuff, being a dad, trying not to yell at my kids. So how's that going, like the whole not yelling thing? Um, I mean, I, hey, we yell every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, you know, it's like you try to to learn and you try to adapt, you know? Yeah. You try to be better than you were. And sometimes you still got to yell. I think yelling is cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, like, screaming at my kid, but I definitely had, like, the dad, hey! You know, yeah. like, the the step. Mm -hmm. You know, like, make sure, like, and I see him, like, when I see him go like that, anytime I, like, get mad and I see my son do, like, the anxiety, like, he'll, like, grab the side of his head and be like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, like, I don't want to make anyone feel that way. No. But still, fucking told you, put your goddamn Legos away. <laughs> we uh, we just were in the process of moving. We're mostly moved to a new house. Still in the same neighborhood. Oh. a new house. It, it fucking sucks. Oh, my God. Uh, but the first day, we were, like, they were both back at school. Like, you know, first night in the house, Monday morning, back at school. They literally just fucking screamed for, like, <laughs> five minutes straight. <laughs> just like, oh, God, this is, and, you know. I was like, don't yell, don't yell. Just talk to him, don't yell. <laughs> I was like, I'm not turning on, because we got TVs in the van. I was like, I'm not turning on SpongeBob until we are done yelling. And eventually, <laughs> none of that works, so eventually I just put on a song I liked and cranked it up too loud, like super loud <laughs> to drown them out. And the younger dude, it's too loud. It's like, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> I want to not hear you. That's a good strategy. I, uh, I like... I can't imagine moving with two young children. Mm -hmm. I did it with a uh, with a three year old. That was rough. Yeah. Uh, but I, not to brag, I am very very lucky. I had one of the chillest kids on the planet. Like it was just. Even now, I got a niece that's five months, mm -hmm. and you know, like even like sometimes she cries, she gets upset. Uh, when I'm there, like, I'm still, like, you know, trying to be, like, like me, you know. I want to be, like, like me, uncle. Like, I want, uh, uh, I'm family. Remember my face. Yeah. Still, she'll, like, I'll pick her up. She's, like, oh, no, no, I can't smell my dad. Get this <laughs> creep away from me. And, you know, but um, the bozo wasn't like that, man. He was just super chill. And, you know, when he started crying, I knew exactly how to shut him up. Mm -hmm. You know, I would pick him up, put my finger in his hand, and he'd be chill. Yeah. Put him up and pat him, he'd be ch fine. He starts doing a <laughs> where he's trying to cry and can't. Cool. Just mm -hmm. give him a little push on the stomach, squeeze his feet, farts it out. <laughs> it was it was very very easy, very very easy. But um, uh, I I did I was stalk you on the socials. I saw that you went back to. Nolens. Yeah, well, we went back to Lafayette, where I'm from, uh, which is like. No, they've got a university. And oh, stuff. God, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's definitely some 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 stringed instruments being played there, but there's also you know sophisticated people doing sophisticated things. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we went back from Mardi Gras, uh, which was amazing. Like, it was so much fun. I have uh, a couple of my really close friends have kids the same. You know, around the same age as my dudes. Okay. Uh, so we went to like all the parades. Like <laughs> both, there's like you know, 
Miles was like a bead catching machine because like you know they're adorable. Miles. Yeah, well, that's all right. First off, <laughs> Obi was just miming, lifting up his shirt, and I want to say that the worst, <laughs> like the worst thing that that girls gone wild dude ever did, you know, besides the other things, yeah, <laughs> the things he's in jail for, uh, all the raping. Yeah, that's that's number one. <laughs> number two. Is letting pe- letting people think that that's what Mardi Gras is, is just like throwing, just you know, throwing beads and getting boob shots. Yes, I've like in my adult life, I've seen, you know, on a parade, like not talking Bourbon Street because that's for fucking tourists and people from the Midwest with their camcorders. Yes, yes, camcorders <laughs> on a parade route. I've seen a boob, uh, just one <laughs> on Mardi Gras day. <laughs> you know, like uh, one, you know, just some some lady showing like lifting up only half of her shirt. Okay. On the parade route, and that was in New Orleans, like not in Lafayette, like. Gotcha. And that's it. Like it's usually just like it's families, it's friends, it's like saying hi to people, it's like making friends with the people next to you. Like you catch something, you hand to them; they catch something, you hand, you know, they hand it to you. Like it's like a really fun community, awesome act- neighborhood street activity. Like it's okay. really great. There's bands, there's floats, there's music. Uh, you know, there's there's beads. There's also light up shit. There's stuffed animals. Oh shit! There's like my kids got so much bullshit, uh, and I'm at the age where like, <clears throat> so the way Mardi Gras works is there's Mardi Gras cruise. It's like an organization. There's balls. You go there, but that's how that's the floats. Each parade is like you know, like a Mardi Gras pub crawl almost type thing. Like crawl. kinda, it's like you know, it's like the group is the ones that throw on that put on the parade. So like mm-hmm. Bonaparte is a big one in in Lafayette. So like. In Bonaparte, I know like half a dozen or a dozen people in it now. Okay. So like literally, we got like pelted with beads and stuff <laughs> by the people I knew on floats, uh, and it's great. Like the kids had a really fun time. They were dancing. Like Miles is a fucking machine. Like getting beads, like putting them in his little wagon and putting his hands up again. Like, <laughs> like Mira was dancing, and people on the float were pointing at him and laughing. He was dancing so much. Like, <laughs> it was a great time. You know, public public drinking is always a fun time. Good food, like. I have a bunch of friends that are just walking distance from the parade route, so it was all really good, a good family boobless experience. All right, so don't go to Lafayette. Stick to Bourbon Street. <laughs> Thank you for the heads up. Thank you for the heads up. I appreciate that. That's it. It's like, <laughs> it's just you know, hey. I I get it, man. Like a lot of, I'm born and raised here mm-hmm. in L.A., and so I understand it when people like get here and there's like this thick haze of fog over the valley, and they're yeah. like. You know, they get on the metro and it, go, it takes you a block until it ends and you have to, like, you know, get an Uber to the you know, the rest of you. I understand that, like, there's a perception of what uh, Mardi Gras is, but yeah. your experience for, like, what it is for locals and, like, the actual meaning of Mardi Gras. Like, here's the question. Like, what? where did Mardi Gras come from? Like, what is it for? Like, well, it's, I mean, it literally means Fat Tuesday. So it was mm-hmm. like a Catholic celebration where you get all your sin and out. Before Ash Wednesday and the start of Easter is the next day. Got it. So that's it's like it was a day of celebration and like overindulgence because that's the next forty days you'd be in lockdown. Lent what time. the fuck? Yeah, it's Yo, a religious holiday. That like I grew up in a super Catholic house mm-hmm. and I never got my fucking sins out on Tuesday. No. I remember waking up at six a.m. and going to fucking mass and mm-hmm. fucking walking in school with a fucking big black ass mark on my forehead. People yeah. were like. What cult is he a part of? I'm like, what the fuck? I'm one of the normal religions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the oldest cults. Uh, yeah, one of the oldest cults. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that's like the whole like wearing masks for Mardi Gras. That's what part of it's about. So you could like, Just you know. Debauchery. Yeah, and so you there. could like drink and what eat. What the and fuck? Do what you want for the day. And like the next day you go to mass. And you this don't whole eat time. On Fridays and yeah my religion's been letting me down yeah and uh yeah i got super fucking fat like <laughs> the last day like we were leaving like on that that wednesday and i was like had a hard time been into i was like are you doing one of the, it was it was rough going like <laughs> squeezing into the airplane seat just like, <laughs> just like trying to like you know like that very last notch like you know just the, the littlest tiniest little tail on my seat belt left <laughs> yeah, i just <laughs> buckle in you know what's crazy is like how easy it is to put on weight Mm. and you know you'll eat healthy and like i go through the same cycle every year you know i new year's i'm like i'm gonna try eating healthy like i can't i'm gonna give myself to my birthday my birthday rolls around i'm like okay i'm a other year older and i feel like shit so then i start really digging in and then you know by october because my birthday's in june 
Like by October, people are like, Obi, you're looking spelt. Obi, you're looking good. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm 15 pounds down. Okay, I'm 18 pounds down. Oh, I'm 20 pounds down. And they're like, you know, I always try to be like, um, Obi, you look good. What's up? I'm like, oh, I just bought bigger shirts. You know, I'm not trying to yeah. front on anything. I'm not <laughs> telling anybody I'm eating healthy. I'm not telling anybody I'm working out. Um, and then the holidays come. And then I eat like a literal leg, uh, like ham, like a literal honey baked ham every day. Yeah. It's just like I'm taking, I'm, it's just, I, c- I couldn't do Mardi Gras, man. Beignets just on, at the ready. Mm-hmm. Well, there's <laughs> like, there's king cake, which is like the, you know, the dessert of Mardi Gras, which is like, uh, you know, it's, it's like, uh, Shannon is never going to Mardi Gras. Yeah. She's it's got like the, a problem with pastries. Oh, it's they're fucking great. So it's like <laughs> they're different. It comes in different varieties, but ultimately it's like a circle kind of cake. And there's icing, and the Mardi Gras colors are uh, gold and purple and green. There's usually frosting of that color, you know. And then you hide a little baby, a little baby Jesus in there. Okay. And that's uh, part of the tradition. It's like if you find the baby, you have to buy the the next king cake. Is the is the tradition? Okay. But <laughs> another one of the traditions is that uh, you know once you get a king cake, the knife stays in the box. Because you're eating that motherfucker as fast as you can. Like you're not. It's not. You're not going to eat it. It's not going to last long enough for you to wash the knife and get a new knife. Like, oh god, it's the knife just... stays in the box. Gotcha. So like mm-hmm. you wake up in the in the morning, cut a slice off, pop it in. Like uh, okay, <laughs> I'm with that. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that takes a donut mm-hmm. and then like I used to cut it in half. Like I wasn't going back for the other half of that glaze. Mm-hmm. But so now I take the donut and I cut it in half and leave it on my desk. Mm-hmm. So everyone knows that I'm like I'm gonna get to it eventually. Yeah, but yeah, I I couldn't. F- Mardi Gras sounds like the most dangerous place no. for me. And like, and you know, like of course New Orleans is good for the food, and Lafayette has fucking. It's like Cajun country, so it's like Cajun mm. food. I had boudin, gumbo, <laughs> and fucking like every like. It's one of those cities that like you know LA's got a couple of good burgers. Like Lafayette mm. has a dozen of the best burgers you fucking had in your life. Oh yeah, just I'm, like just around like. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a magical place. All right. Well, I next year I'll come with. I'll bring the bows. We I mean, I would you would love it. We'd have a really good time. Like I'll get a the, little Airbnb, yeah. I'll I'll rent it early. That's what we did. We Airbnb it. We like the Airbnb we stayed at was my friends uh used to live in that neighborhood and there's a little grocery store in the corner. It's not even a grocery store, it's fucking you know, it, it, if they had gas, it'd be a gas station. You, know, okay. like, <laughs> okay. you buy beer, and they have chili dogs and boudin. Boudin's <laughs> like a, a kind of sausage. You kind of okay. it's like rice and smoked meat mixed together and with spices in it, and it's a uh, so fucking good. Man, I sp- like sometimes when I look at food in New Orleans, it's like you know, a college kid made some like five star menu. Mm-hmm. Like that's just some of the food I see. I'm like. Like crab boils, just like a bucket, <laughs> just yeah. a bucket of seafood onto a like a little trash bag, and I'm like, this is some of the best food I ever had. It's uh, yeah. So that was it was a really great trip. Okay. And then uh, yeah. And then now you're home and uh, now I'm back you're here breathing heavy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Stop eating at a certain time of night. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, shit, man. That's I'm glad. Like it looked like you and the whole fam had fun. Um. Yeah, it was great. I, I mean, it, it was really great to like be around my friends and their kids and see all our kids play together and like just cause fucking mayhem. Like they all meshed really easily, and it was just really fun. What What would you say is like? Because you know, like Bourbon Street's just for tourists. Mm-hmm. But if you if like you went to New Orleans for Mardi Gras, where would you say the best places to be? Is it Lafayette? Uh, uh, Lafayette's definitely more family friendly. Okay. Like it's like. But it's the same as in New Orleans. Like in New Orleans, there's families everywhere you go. Uh, like we used to live in the in uptown in the Garden District, and like we would literally like <laughs> New Orleans is like a, a big little city, <laughs> a, little, a little big city rather. Uh, so we would like we would walk like from our house all the way down uh, like where the streetcars are, end up by I ten, and like literally we'd walk from our house to the French Quarter like I ten. This yeah. fucking oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, that's how we it's say called it down the there. ten. That's all right. Say, yeah, that's how all we right. say it down there. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jesus, go! That's why we need to build a wall for motherfuckers like this. I ten. These interstates were new. <laughs> <laughs> but now they, they, you'd like second line, which is like where a, a brass band goes, and you just fucking dance your way down the street, and like you stop at a bar, and you. Go, Eat something all you know. Eat something somebody's selling. Yeah, take some bees. It's it. It's a fucking time, man. Uh, you know what's like one of the things you just reminded me. One thing I hated about New uh, when I was in New Orleans, as like this touristy place. Like when I was there, like 
I was like, this is crazy, but like every fucking restaurant, every fucking band was playing when the Saints go marching in. Oh yeah, and and like there's a very there's a big distinction between like Dixieland, like <laughs> yeah, and then like like, like <laughs> New Orleans style brass bands, which is like move your body, like oh yeah. So we took the uh, I think we took your when I went to New Orleans, we took your advice. We went on to a different. Yeah, we went to Fr- the French. We like we mm-hmm. went to Frenchman, and yeah, it was like way more chill. And there was just like an amazing band playing in every fucking restaurant, every fucking bar. Yeah, and it wasn't like I hate Bourbon Street. The fact that I like stepped in horse shit three times, four <laughs> times. <laughs> Like, and uh, then yeah, they, that'll happen. Uh, I'm just like these <laughs> these cops just sitting on their horse, like, "Oops, you stepped in shit. You're bad." I'm like, "No, that's not how it goes. That's not how it goes. You can't get fined for not having a dog on a leash." And then this dude has a wild animal riding a wild animal shitting in the middle of the street. The mi- not even the sidewalk in yeah. the middle of the street. There's nobody sweeping it up into a pile. You're just like literally walking, like, "Oh, that's whoop," and it's. I mean, they <laughs> mostly eat like grass and stuff so i know it's it's like it's still shit but the it's pr- like it's, the problem it's better than human the pro yeah it's better than human shit yes which i see every time i'm in downtown Los yeah Angeles. downtown <laughs> we were just working in downtown and it is fucking rough dude everybody like coming to work it was kind of like it was it was almost hilarious like our first day down there having new crews show up like one would come in like to the pl this guy just whipped out his dick right in front of my window and I, I fucking just stepped in human shit. And I'm like, I, yeah, I know. It's just, it's downtown. It's downtown. Uh, yo, there's some dude outside, like, with no teeth, wearing just a newspaper, screaming at a parking uh, a parking cone. Welcome to downtown. Yeah. No, and I, like, one of the days I, I walked away and got my lunch, and, like, there was probably, like, two, maybe three just, you know, insane people to, like, one normal person trying, oh, yeah. trying to live their life. <laughs> Yeah, it was the ratio is wild. It's way off. Yeah, it is way off because you'll definitely see somebody and be like, "What are you doing down here?" They're like put together, mm-hmm. walking down. They got like their Apple Air Maxes on, and they're like kind of just trying to stay out of the fray. And you, as you like keep like zero in on this person, like this person looks right out of place. They'll pass like what looks like uh, the Muppets Electric Mayhem band, just like <laughs> sitting there shaking, You're like what the fuck is going on? But yes. Um, we can go on and on. Um, I'm glad you're back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you back. know, well, I want to take a break because we get back. I want to kind of talk to you about some of the things we've missed. Yeah. Uh, for our, for our intro episode, and then we'll get into kind of what people can expect for the rest of the season. Yeah. All right. Well, we guys, we'll be right back with uh, some more Papa Don't Preach. See you in a second. <laughs> back yeah that's right it's quick i saw you saw you people no, i phone. was doing research oh shit yeah i um <laughs> it, we didn't add this to the bullet points but we were just talking about new orleans and there's been a really interesting story that come out in the last like couple of days oh what what happened uh, so it um apparently uh the superintendent of police oh the, like superintendent of new orleans <laughs> went before uh like the city council and they wanted to like renew their lease for the evidence room and like the police departments because there's a rat and cockroach infestation. And the quote was like, they're all high. Like the rats are all, they're eating the marijuana in our storage rooms. The rats are all high. Whoa. So, okay. What is that? What, what does the effect of marijuana have on a rat? I mean, they obviously chill the fuck out. Yeah. Right? Like I feel like it'd be easier. <laughs> like, if you get a quote, it should be like, yo, man, they're, they're, you know, we, we slowed them down for you. Yeah. So I've been doing great, not smoking, but I can't say as much for the rats in New Orleans. Hey, oh, good time down there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, here. Uh, and, you know, we've been apart for a long time. A lot has happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know your kids are doing well, which is glad. I'm glad to hear my, um, my kid is doing just fine. He had a bully. Oh really? We had a bully, but it was handled. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't like. 
It was handled. I can't really talk about. I don't think uh, I could. T- I could talk about what part of it was handled. Uh huh. But all I can say is that my son had a bully, and uh, he, the, he was uh, older. He was in the fourth grade, mm. and you know he. It would happen at the after school, and then one. T- I guess this bully made the mistake of doing it during regular school hours, uh-huh. and so for somebody saw because. You know, my kid was telling me like, hey, there was this kid that's always that's mean to him, and I'm like, oh, that you know that shit happens. But then a teacher told me what's been happening, and I was like, oh, this is not like somebody's being mean to you, grow up thicker skin. Like this motherfucker's targeting my my, yeah. my kid. And then, are we you know, are we at the like? Is this a podcast we have to pick up in like 15 years after the statute of limitations? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> goes away. Or well, it? like yeah, they told like it sucks because. The after school, the after school program is not really connected with the school, and even though they're at the same campus, they mm-hmm. just like show up and do their. They're, they're just babysitters, you know. Like, yeah, um, they don't really. Some of them are just trying to get college credit. Some of them are just like, you know, my ride is working here <laughs> <laughs> after work type shit. But um, the school tried to. They did their investigation, and what really sucks is that this kid is who was picking on my 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 son is going through it like yeah parents getting divorced uh one po- one of the parents is now unhoused and he's going through it and he just doesn't know how to deal with it and i did something that i'll tell you off the pod that i'm not too proud of mm-hmm. but i'm letting you know i found out that he was going through it after what i did so I'm still a good person. <laughs> so I'm still a good person. In the eyes of God. In the Oh, shit. He's watching. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but, yeah, a lot of shit has happened. A lot of shit has happened. Yeah. Um, I, you just got back from New Orleans. Did, uh, were you on a Boeing plane? Uh, no, I definitely I was not in the exit row. <laughs> the <plane. laughs> Do you know the other company that makes airplanes? No. Airbus. There's two companies that make planes. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it. There's this Airbus and Boeing. I had no idea. I thought I there was like, you know, we make planes or us. <laughs> like, no, but there's only two. Um, and one of them is, you know. Dropping out of the sky. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Sucking not, people out of their seats and not in a good way. You know, yeah. Well, the, <laughs> did you mean sucking people off their seats and not in a good way? Yeah, something like okay. that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, I, I think it was like what 2020 when was it 2020 or 2019 when like these planes were going up and just nose diving into the ground mm-hmm. and they had to ground all those planes and like we can't figure out why <laughs> and apparently it was just like a computer system to help assist uh, that that was supposed to assist pilots that was just getting the trajectory wrong yeah. and be like oh it's a no- we're gonna crash and they would just I, i'm not sure if it's still the case but like I think a lot of like a lot of airplanes, their programming is still like on floppy disks. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yes, like like you know, fifty you know forty year old technology. Like they're still like programming their flight routes and flight paths. Yeah, with that. I have to turn off my phone because it might drop this plane out of the sky. Like mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out, and I, I you know everybody's got their story of how they talk to a flight attendant. And they said it's bullshit. It doesn't affect the plane. I have one of those stories Mm -hmm. i spoke i was talking to a flight attendant and i had my phone i'm like is and i just like showed her like hey this like it says i have cell phone service like i don't put my shit on airplane mode what's the deal with that she's like we mostly tell people to keep their phones away because to like landing and taking off is the most turbulent is the most dangerous part of the flight yeah and if you know some asshole's phone goes flying out and he has to get up and get it it can be a problem and yeah. i was like oh i never thought about it that way it's like yeah she's like we can't have laptops flying into the ceiling or sliding down the hall so it's like yeah it's more like a yeah it's more like a, a, a <laughs> like they're being our moms for a second that's basically <laughs> it they're like you put your shit on airplane mode mm-hmm. that means you can't talk to anybody you can put it away you know exactly where it is yeah. <laughs> i was like okay uh there is also uh our producer was telling us that this guy the whistleblower from boeing mm-hmm um to the day before you or the day that he was supposed to testify they came to his house and he committed air quote suicide yeah i uh, i saw that too which is um it's always ama- it's always amazing how that happens huh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Those have> a re- <laughs> like whistleblowers have a real 
real left turn change of heart. Yeah, I just like when it I, comes to dealing with you know massive corporations <laughs> that are getting their you know they're trying to fuck up their shit. You know, it tells you what type of person is a whistleblower. Like these guys usually like they come out with all these secrets and then all of a sudden they develop a cough or like you know a serious bullet wound to the head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They have a real problem staying alive, and I think that's a big problem with the whistleblowers in our in our country. It's uh, you know, it's, it's an it's, epidemic. You know, <laughs> it, it's not just an American problem. Like you know, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all over. It's uh, it's worldwide. Maybe a human problem. I'd say it, it, it might be a human problem. Yeah, people are I, like they're they'll be like to be stitched on. Unpopular opinion, mm -hmm. and and my heart goes out to this guy's family, and like, yeah, nobody deserves to die. But especially someone just trying to keep us safe. Yeah, like. If this was Boeing, not if, but whoever's interest group, how sloppy. Yeah. How sloppy. They couldn't do it two days before. They couldn't do it two days before. They couldn't inject him with, like, you know, an air, like an air syringe, mm -hmm. make it mimic a fucking brain hemorrhage. Like, they couldn't. Like, they, they A gunshot wound. <laughs> oh, this guy shot himself. Like, oh, I watch SVU. Everyone knows that. Just get a little pop. Rub off the gun. Mm -hmm. like, come on, man. Yeah, I, there was, you know, I can't remember if it's a mafia whistleblower. One of, like, a whistleblower, like, in the past was, like, had two self-inflicted gunshot wounds. <laughs> it's like that kind of shit. It's like, oh, oh, oh really? Oh, gotcha. You got, you got an extra one off? <laughs> oh, yeah. The guy, the, guy, the guy was found dead in his home with a bullet wound to the back of his head with a rat stuffed in his mouth, self-inflicted. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Uh, but yeah, Boeing is. I, I. What do you think would be the worst thing that would happen if Bo if this guy testified to Boeing? They'd they'd, ha they'd have to spend some of their money they're hoarding to <laughs> fix the plane. Yeah, okay. Which is the worst thing for them. I guess so. Wait a minute. I gotta. I gotta <laughs> sell my yacht to make sure people don't get sucked off their seats. First, I gotta take out the ashtrays. Now I gotta put, fucking bolt down the doors. What is this? That's fucking a, communist Russia? That's definitely another thing. Is like. <laughs> You know you're on a bullish shitty plane when you see fucking ashtray. Yeah, like, like I'm looking at my <laughs> I'm thinking I'm like, is this an ashtray? This can't have been used in the last 30 years. Like this is wild. No. Like I'm like, I'm flying in a goddamn dinosaur. Like I my car is almost 20 years old right now, and it is struggling. <laughs> like, like, uh, it is like I'm I wouldn't drive that cross country. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I I barely take that shit out of my of my area code, but let alone my goddamn the goddamn state. Um, but yeah, the government could possibly take over Boeing, and if Boeing doesn't get their shit taken over in the government, like says, oh, we're gonna oversee this shit. Then all these senators walking around with like Boeing swag and all this money, yeah, trying to trying to ban TikTok. <laughs> I about to say like they, uh, you know. Government loves to take over some shit they they have no business taking over. Yeah, what but the, the TikTok thing? It's like, is it the the House like over like eighty one percent voted for the resolution to be like sell the company or shut it down? Oh, and by the way, me and my friends we got we're gonna make our own company. We could buy it from you if you need. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh, that's really fucking transparent. I see, dude. It's so fucking stupid. Cause it's like. They do it because it's the because it's the Chinese company and they're worried about the data. Yeah, or data being stolen. Yes, data is stolen every fucking day. Yeah, like, like there's it's, it happens all the time on every single app. There's there's <laughs> data breaches. There's hacks, and none of that's a big deal. But like when there's hey, we can yeah, make, we, can make some Chinese. Bucks. we can make some bucks off of this TikTok. I think Dude, kids I, love the dancing. How do we make money off of it? They're about to like if the House of Representatives bans tiktok like it's crazy they can't vote on a border bill because they need to save it for after the election mm -hmm. so they have something to run on but they're gonna ban tiktok before the election yeah do you know how many motherfuckers use tiktok like do you understand like you ban tiktok like that's a lot of votes you're fucking sacrificing <laughs> right there you about to get the house flipped upside down like it's it's wild if you have to ban something, ban X. Ban yeah, Twitter. Let's start there. Yeah, ban that. That shit is garbage. It fucking sucks. And you know what? It's still, still Twitter.com. It's still Twitter.com. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Another thing. Ban <laughs> threads. I yeah. was all about threads. I was all about it. And now it's just... I have to... I it's have to just... 
the fucking women hold their tits out. <laughs> like, hey, that, let's let's slow it down. Okay, a I'm bit. slow. I, <laughs> it's, it's like I had to download another app because like, I was like, okay, what's the oh, oh this you know some some someone I follow on Instagram has a thread. What's this thread about? And I click it and like please download threads. Like I'm never no, I'm yeah, not doing that. That's the I'm thing. Not, it's your your one step. You know, it's another step I'm not going to do to to check out this person's. And that's the bullshit. Thought. It shows up in my feed like Instagram is all fucked up because like. I can't get past. I'm like, okay, suggested, suggested, sponsored, mm-hmm. not to. Oh, this is my friend posted three days ago. Well, what the fuck? And then, oh, a thread link. Click, takes me to another app, and it's just this what looks to be uh, either Nordic woman <laughs> jumping into water with her boobs <laughs> hanging out. I think uh, I think you and I are on the same algorithm. Yeah, That's we're on the, like, <laughs> because we're next to each other. Like yeah. before, my shit was just like Dragon Ball Z and people falling on their face. Mm-hmm. And then now that we are we do podcasts together, now it's Dragon Ball Z, food, big breasted women, and people falling on their face. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's just like these guys like the same shit. Yeah, you. I'm uh, start, start getting comics yeah, up on your shit. I was about to say, put you know, move one of those and put in pro wrestling, and that's my algorithm. Yeah, yeah. that's. <laughs> like, speaking of funny algorithms, um, your fucking wife, mm-hmm. her algorithms fucked up because she's be she's been sending me like, you know how like I get real, she gets real cringy watching. She doesn't like being uncomfortable watching people horribly rap. Yeah, she's not a big she fan of awkward. It. If any, di- like if if we're watching a show, any, <laughs> like, any any version where someone starts to rap, she's like, no, I can't watch this. Yeah, I can't. Do it. It's like she'd rather watch live death. Yeah, than someone rap. <laughs> and so like it became like I would send her like this horrible rap thing, I'm like how much you hate this, mm-hmm. and then she would send me some horrible rap. She's like this is pretty bad, and now she's like, check out how terrible this is. Check out how terrible this is, and now it's like. 90s church videos of like <sighs> hey now we're going to hell i'm telling you you're not doing well and i'm mm. like why did you send this to me <laughs> what is your algorithm she's like yeah it's screwed it's fucked yeah, it's done <laughs> you're fucked now now that things now that some, i really love throwback christian hip-hop yeah it's and it started showing up on my fucking reels now mm-hmm. and now it's like um i think i sent her uh, one that somebody sent me, and I sent it to Natalie. It was like, it was a like a CBS news report, daytime news report, uh, in '88 mm-hmm. of new hip words for the '90s. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, hey man, bucked. I'm gonna. I got so bucked last night. I must have <laughs> drank an entire case. <laughs> and then like the other one was clutching pearls. Yeah, like pearl clutching, mm-hmm. and. I guess it just lost its meaning because I can't say now looking back like, oh, they had it wrong. But the lady was like, it's these two women talking in an office. And she's just like, she's like, hey, did you hear about Danny? Yeah, I can't believe he did that. Clutch my pearls. I'm so disgraced. I'm like, you're not supposed to say it. And she actually had pearls on and clutched them. I'm like, what? what's going on here? But I can't say they had it wrong. But uh, I got to show you that video. I'm going to show I, it's. Uh, we'll put a link. We'll put a link on there. Then I'll link it up for you. Um. One I, one thing I wanted also wanted to bring up to you, because are you a big fast food guy? I, like, mm. like, are are you? <laughs> how about this? Are you a guy who doesn't eat fast food, but there may be one or two receipts in the left pocket of your car? No, I, I, I don't litter. But <laughs> if I just loosely happen to be holding a receipt as I'm driving fast, no, I uh, I'm I'm bad. You know, I'm bad to terrible when it comes to fast food. I've sometimes like it's just the only thing open. Yeah, I, I I just like I'm just I'm just straight up addicted. Some like you know we talked about like <laughs> you know way back you know since I stopped smoking weed like I, t- I talked to my psychiatrist the other day. It's like <laughs> I think I'm the only dude in the history that stopped smoking weed and gained weight. Yeah, <laughs> it's like turns out they were not it was separate separate deals. <laughs> My problem with food and my problem with weed were not interconnected. I had one before the other. Oh, yeah. And that one is just like fucking, just hey. like top of the pile, like King Kong, like <laughs> swatting down my other addictions. I I thought I just got older. <laughs> By the way, be picturing King Kong swatting your addictions out of the same. Just like, Hilarious. You know, just a branded fucking King Kong at McDonald's and Taco Bell. <laughs> Well, like and oh, fucking uh, for Cadbury, all oh, those Cadbury crunchy eggs. Oh, oh my that, that's God. a that's a whole different addiction. Oh. 
But yes, I I've been to a deep fast. You you've dabbled. <laughs> I've dabbled. Hey, I've dabbled. Uh, dabbled. What was what would be your go to? What's your go to? Uh, McDonald's is usually my go to. Okay. Because there's most that's the most in my neighborhood. Oh yeah. Followed that, by a Taco Bell. Is it crazy? Like I'm not tripping. It's obscene how many McDonald's are wi- like in, in, in Los Angeles. Between like, my house and your house, there's like four. Yes, it's yeah. it's it's insane. It's insane. And like I I remember. Ozo was like, hey, Dad, can I have chicken nuggets? And I was like, um, yeah, I can make some chicken nuggets. He's like, oh, I want it from McDonald's. And I was like, okay. He's like, but you passed it. And I was like, there's, there's, we're going to see. Well, like, yeah, we'll be all right. There's a, and then he started. He's like, oh, there's one. He's like, there's so many McDonald's. There's one. There's so many McDonald's. And I'm like, yeah, this is a, this is a problem. Yeah. But they're everywhere. But um, I was talking to our producer, Blaine, and uh, I, I think it was a couple weeks ago I had Mickey D's. I've gotten it twice with my kid, but like I've held it back because like one of my 2024 goals is fuck fast food, just yeah. get it out of my life. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, let me go to Carl's. I haven't been to Carl's in a while. I I left the stage at like it was fuck it was like midnight. It's like 12:30. I left or some shit. It was mm-hmm. fucking stupid. And I'm the only thing open was Carl's Jr. And I was like, oh, 24 hour Carl's Jr. I'll do it. I'll eat it when I get home. I got uh, like a double cheeseburger, fries, like one of the menu, like a big, like think they're big Western or some shit. Mm-hmm. The double, and I always get it with sourdough bread. First of all, I don't know if anybody else has dealt with this, but I pulled up at Wendy's and it was an AI person, like it wasn't <laughs> yes. a real person. Yeah. And now normally you pull up and it's like, hey, you want to you know order through the app today or try our little pie. And you just kind of wait for like somebody going, hello, uh, yeah. Yeah. Can, can I help you? Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just a completely <laughs> different voice. Oh, hi. So thanks I got, for coming to McDonald's. Yeah. So I pulled up and it was like, oh, hi. Thanks for coming to Mc, Thanks for coming to Carl's. What do you want? And I was like, okay, let me just wait for this shit to pass. Are you still there? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, hello? Yay. I'm your virtual assistant. Just tell me what you want and I'll make, I'll write it down. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, I'm like, uh, I was like, Look, I forgot how to talk. <laughs> I was like, um, can I have uh, a number four with sourdough bread? Um, yeah. Uh, so you want, and it said the whole thing with sourdough bread? I'm like, um, yeah. Uh, uh, what kind of drink do you want? I was like, um, you know, um, a, a payback, a doctor. Pa- um, pa- um, I'm sorry. I didn't get that. I'm like, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> like, how do I? I'm, I'm like, this is so weird for me. Yeah, your but, robot enthusiasm is freaking me out. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was not a fan. Uh, but anyway, I ordered everything through this person. I go in there. I see these two, like, you know, early 20s two dudes sitting in there giggling, maybe high. Who knows? He's like, hey, what's up, man? I got your food coming right up. I'm like, yeah, what's with the what's with the fucking virtual assistant? And I was like so freaked out about it. I was like, oh yeah, it's a program we turn on and off. And I was like, cool. That seems like you're participating in your own demise. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got one fucking job here. Yeah. And I said, man, <laughs> like, okay. Um, but like after that whole situation kind of left me, because I didn't even look at it, I didn't even think about it. I just went over there, I gave him my car, got my car back. After that whole thing. I look at the receipt and it was twenty one dollars, and Jeez. I was like, twenty one fucking dollars. Wait, what did I get? What the fuck did I get? Yeah, <laughs> like what the fuck? Like, How much did I get? What did I get? What did I get? And it's because I got like a large. I got a large combo. Uh, you know, I got a substitution. Uh, you know, I went to Chris Cut Fries, and that was twenty one dollars. And I started to think like, this ain't the hamburger Hamlet. No, you know, this ain't Red Robin. This ain't the habit. Yeah, this is fucking, this is Carl's Jr. Yeah, in the there's middle of the night. N- there's no business with this being over 15 bucks. 15, I'd be like, oh, man, this is pricey. <laughs> fucking fat obes, <laughs> you know, extra large, but $21. It's uh, it's insane. Like, I went to the one that I'm not supposed to go to, uh, that may or may not be a, have hate in the center of their delicious chicken the other day. Oh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, it was $17. <laughs> what? Yes. What the fuck? Just for you? Just for me. God and I didn't, damn. I didn't order like like supplementary food. I just yeah. got a combo. Yeah, that's the thing too. Yeah. It's. <laughs> I get when I order Chinese food and it shows up and it's like seventy eight dollars because like you know, 
when they even when they show up and it's just for me, they put like four plates in there because yeah, they're like, this like, is yeah. obviously not for one person. <laughs> uh, but I'm you know I'm shopping for the week. Yeah, it's very <laughs> very kind of you to add those extra plates. Yeah, but. yeah, we we both know what this is. Yeah. you know what this address is. <laughs> like, come on. But you know, I order like they they charge you for ketchup, they charge you for sauce. You know, they only put the two napkins. If you ask for extra napkins, it's fifty cents. I was like. <laughs> Who's that helping? Yeah. Like, what the, f- like, where is this coming from? And, like, apparently a lot of these incentives are to, like, stop the garbage, like, to mm-hmm. lower the amount of waste. But. Well, one of the things, one of the things. I'm not a fan. Like, it's been outrageous. Because, like, usually, like, you know, I had, like, my McDonald's order, like, I keep it, like, 10 bucks, 11 bucks. And now it's, like, jacked up. So they forced me. <laughs> I've already talked about having to download another app. I've I've downloaded a couple fast food apps. Oh my god, you got the that's where the deals are. Oh. It's, it is it is stupid. Like it keep I, like I the think... other the other day, like I was like you know, it was uh you know we're one of the moving days. Like Nat was at the house. Oh, it was last Saturday. Like I took the kids swim class. Nat was doing house stuff. Mm-hmm. So on the way back, I was like, man, I'm fucking hungry. Like <laughs> I wonder if I have anything on the app. And it was like. Dollar any size French fries from McDonald's. It's like I've got three dollars in my wallet. Like I get a small Coke and a, a l- large fry. They could eat some fries. It's like it's you what know, the fuck. It was like one of the other things. Like six dollar medium Big Mac meal. You can't get that shit anywhere else. Six dollar like, medium Big Mac. See, that's some bullshit. It is. And, I, you know, it's like in the thing. It's like yeah, take my data. You want my social security number? I don't even fucking <laughs> care. Like, six dollar Big Mac. Like yeah, McDonald's. I'm gonna do it. See, this is where it fucking. AOC, Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is this is the shit you need to be fucking taking to the floor. Fuck TikTok. McDonald's can't be coming out with fucking secret apps. Yeah, with deals on them. Mm-hmm. And, you get, and, they, <laughs> and you get points for ordering. Like, like oh, oh you've God. earned yourself a tin McNuggets. Like, wow, really now? <laughs> have I? <laughs> well, now that you mention it, I could have ten more McNuggets on, on top of my food. See, that sucks, man. Because like. This is the type of shit. Like, I'm literally not, I'm trying never to eat that shit again. Yeah, and now you're awful. telling me that there's deals? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it was making it easier. Like, I was telling Blaine, my go-to, uh, my go-to was the double cheeseburger, two double cheeseburgers, medium fries. That was mm-hmm. my go-to, because I always have my canteen. I don't need a drink. Yeah. I'll just, I get that. I put the fries in the burger, and I'm just, like, bup, 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 bup. good. And I can take a little, uh, some leftover fries. I'm done. That's good. Mm-hmm. It used to be, like, seven bucks, six, seven bucks. It's $11 now. Yeah. Eleven dollars for two cheeseburgers and French fries. What a drink! No, no, I'll sell sell my dad to to, to, to big old Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that deal, Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, not a fan, not a fan. Um, so uh, with the with since I haven't seen you in a while, what are you watching these days? Like, um, well, like what are some new shows coming into the new year? Because I know I got one. Yeah, I got one that I love, and I got one that I fucking hate. I uh, all right, this is uh, we're going deep in the nerd territory. Okay. I've been watching uh, some anime lately. You've been watching anime? Yes. I hey, fucking, I'm just as shocked as you are. Welcome. Yeah, so, welcome. So I'm gonna start watching SmackDown just so we like <laughs> so we have everything in common now. <laughs> well, the one I've been watching, it's on it's on Netflix. Uh, okay, you know, this is not a sponsored content, but it's called mm-hmm. Delicious in Dungeon. Of course, and yeah, it's, of course it's, you're uh, watching. <laughs> the food looks the, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, I'm not sure if you know, but I'll describe it to the people who mm-hmm. don't know. Yes, yes, yes. It's like a video game, kind of like you know, in a fantasy world, these people are in a dungeon. They get their asses handed to them, and they need to go back to save one of the guy's sisters, but mm-hmm. they have no money for gear. So mm-hmm. the idea is like, hey, we you know we don't have money for supplies, but <laughs> what if we eat the monsters? <laughs> That are in the dungeon. So they meet a guy like mm. Senshi, who's like a dwarf. He's re- he like lives in the dungeon. He's really good at cooking. <laughs> so it's like partial cooking show where it's like it makes they make this delicious looking like you know one of one of the uh, you know one of my favorite ones is like they um, he makes like a holy holy wall. Yeah, you know, they're in a section where ghosts are attacking them. So he's like, mm. okay, I could just make some like. The makeshift like holy holy water to, to scare these ghosts off. So he puts like salt and sugar and all these ingredients in a jar and he's swinging around and like they mm-hmm. scare the ghosts off and they get it back and it's all frosty and he takes a bite. It's like wow, it's like delicious sorbet. <laughs> so it's like ghost sorbet. <laughs> but like you know, if they eat like a giant scorpion, they, it's like you know, it looks 
delicious. Okay. Yeah, that I saw an episode where they cooked up a giant mushroom. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. mushroom monster. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's kind of, it's actually a, it's funny. It's a yeah. funny show too. Uh, but yeah, that's it's funny. That's yeah, of course the one that I'm into. That's is. of course the one you're into. <laughs> They're like, add add soy sauce and a little a pinch of salt, and you know, cook it for this long, <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, and it displays like you know, uh, you know, like poached giant scorpion or yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> like in a display dish yeah it's it's very it's very like one thing in anime is they make the food look very good but yeah. this show takes it to another level mm. takes it and to a whole other level eating monsters they're eating like man eating you know they're eating like whatever but, like deep it into it they eat like a like kelpie like a horse fish well like <laughs> a lot of the mo- like and now on the with respect a lot of these monsters you could say that they're monsters but they're delicious looking monsters as well <laughs> like they're not like you know alien looking fucking graboids yeah. like mm-hmm. some of them are just like that can't be a monster like it is a monster but <laughs> it should not look like you know bow yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the things i'm into although although yeah tell me what you're into um so i got one that i was waiting for and I just I just finished the first episode, and I'm hooked. I can't wait to just watch more. Is Shogun? Oh and, yeah, it looks good. Uh, yeah, it's. I, I imagine somebody walked into a studio and was like, "Yo, I want to make uh, Game of Thrones, but with samurai." And if I was a studio head, no chill, mm-hmm. I would have just emptied my pockets right there because that's exactly <laughs> what I want to see. Well, it's and a remake of an old miniseries, right? I have no idea. It is, I, I, I believe so. Like, it's, it's like it's, from the seventies or eighties. They already made it. It's like a reimagining remake of that. Oh, great! I mean, all, I mean, you know, I'm down for it. Yeah, I, I am down it's for amazing. it. Amazing. I heard it's really great. so far. Uh, it's great because wa- so I'll let you know. I watched the first episode of Shogun after like I had one of those. You ever have one of those days where you clean the house and then, um, I don't know because like your house is never empty. But I cleaned the house and nobody was home. Mm-hmm. Kid wasn't home. Shannon wasn't home. And I was just like sitting in the living room and I was like, okay, now what? Yeah, I'll just watch a movie. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I <laughs> just need that's to kill. Literally, why I started watching. It's like okay, like no one's here. Like okay, I guess, so. I'll, I guess I'll watch this <laughs> show that like the preview looked good. Yeah, I just use TV to like. Kill time, like I need to walk, kill three hours. That's three SVUs or Napoleon. Yeah, you know. So uh, I watched Napoleon, and boy, was I disappointed. Yeah, because they made it seem like this. I, I don't. I guess all movies do this, where they have this big elaborate trailer, and they're like, mm, five stars. This person you never heard of said it was the best reimagining you've ever seen. Joaquin Phoenix is priceless, stupendous, and I'm like. All right, you know, I'll see this shit. I'll see who doesn't love a war epic. Mm-hmm. And so I watched this, and first of all, they don't speak French at all in the movie. <laughs> they're just, they're all just talking. With, no, yeah. It's not, it's just, hello. <laughs> Is this English? <laughs> Mon, sacre bleu. Mon Maybe. Bleu. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Um, I don't like movies where they, they do that, where it's just like, at least give me like something where they, st- you know, somebody is telling the story. Like if you have mm-hmm. a narrator that's uh, saying it in English and then they just they go from French to speaking English. So you're hearing it from somebody else's point of view. That makes sense. But yeah. I can't just believe I'm watching Joaquin Phoenix. One of the whitest dudes on the planet. Just like being Napoleon, like it, it was not a great movie. It was I, not a great uh, movie at all. I am the part of my life where it's like you really have to sell me if your movie's longer than two hours. Like, yeah, yeah, I get that. Like, uh, I, I, I don't think most stories should be longer than an hour and a half. Dude, I fell asleep. Cinema. I fell asleep du- uh, during uh, uh, Flowers of the Killer Moon, which and oh, I, yeah, and it was a great. It, it looked. I kept on waking up, and I'm like, okay, I get what's going on here. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> first of all, it was nothing like to figure out, and yeah. it did not need to be <laughs> three yeah. hours. But it was the same shit. What was that last movie he did? The Irishman? Mm-hmm. Same shit. Like, what the fuck are you doing? I, uh, I'm i pretty bad at falling asleep in movies, especially in movie theaters. Uh, and <laughs> we went to go see the last Jurassic Park movie. Okay. Uh, have you seen that one? Uh, yeah, the one with Do- uh, Dominion. Yeah, where like the old cast comes back. So I'm like nodding off, nodding off. Then I wake <laughs> up and they're underground and this dinosaur just running at me. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. You know, I know there's gonna be dinosaurs in your dinosaur movie. 
Dude. I was not ready for that. And it was the worst time to win. <laughs> dad laughed at me. He's like, have you done those movies where they like serve you a meal? Like they bring uh, you your food? I'm so bad at those. I can't do those. So that's like the worst thing ever, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Because like I'm watching a movie and then like this person like shuffling over. Did you order a hot dog, uh, a slice of cheese pizza, popcorn, and two drinks? I'm like, bitch, shut up. Yeah. It's a what the fuck? What, are you doing? <laughs> you, what the fuck are you doing? Like when you sit down, there should be a portion in a movie where you eat. You should watch the first 30, 40 minutes of the movie. There should be a 10 minute intermission. Cause if I don't want to finish the movie, I'm not. Mm-hmm. If I get up and I'm like, you know what? I'm not really feeling this. I'm going to leave. I should be able to yeah, without disturbing anybody. But if I want to come back and get ready, maybe watch a trailer before I get right back into the movie, and there's a little recap too, great. It should be a whole experience. In the, I mean, Fucking 40 bucks for a goddamn all, movie. That's all bad, and the worst, the worst, the worst is they always come and slide the bill like as like the second mm-hmm. act, you know, as the third <laughs> act is like getting its, its emotional apex. It's yeah. like Spider-Man is turning into dust. They're like, <laughs> just, just, just pay. Yeah, yeah just, I'll be back go. if you want. Here you go. It's like I'm trying to be engaged in <laughs> cinema, and you're sliding a bill for all the bullshit that I ate. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't like that experience personally. Uh, well, I've been the reason I was asking is I'm gonna I want to go see Dune t- uh, Dune two. Yeah. Uh, sh- actually, Shannon wants to see Dune two. I told her she can't see it unless she watches Dune one. Like, no, you cannot. Like it's not. You literally have. You will have no idea what's going. Like on. it doesn't make sense. The movie will not no. make sense to you. They're just like, okay, what the fuck? Um, but we're I was trying like you know Muadib and <laughs> Shahalud and like Benny Jesseret, all these words at you. And you're, you're like, not excuse gonna, me. What, what, you're not going to understand here? what's going on. And like even the first one, I'm like Jesus Christ. But I I got pulled in in the mm-hmm. middle. In the middle, I was like, okay, I can get with this. But we're trying to decide what theater to see it in. I uh. Whether we see it at IMAX, mm-hmm. which oh, will probably have to be in like fucking Long Beach or some shit, or do we see it at the Cineplex over in Hawthorne? Um, because they got like the big ass seats, but then again, the waiter's gonna come through. But the good thing is that it's all you pay at the fucking, you swipe at your little chair. Yeah. So there's no cash, no nothing. It's like beep. No, I like to go like to the most low tech theater if I can go. I like the fact that I can sit up here and it's great. But I just think they bring the food out at terrible times. Like, yeah. it's like if I order food, it should show up before the fucking movie starts. That mm-hmm. just like what in what world did somebody think like, that was a good I mean, idea? I mean, chicken fingers trying to watch Godzilla here. Like, no, nah, it's like I'm sitting there. I'm like, what? What happened? It's terrible. And <coughs> I, this is gonna be this is another fat person problem, mm-hmm. but. Let's chips let's sit up yeah let's sit up a little bit, bit. <laughs> i've been sucking in for like three months now um one of the biggest uh i got doritos i got the cool ranch doritos during the movie mm-hmm. and after like the first bite i took i was like why did they give these to me why are they even selling these here yeah i was just like what the it's fuck the loudest i'm like what the fuck there's no way that could be like <laughs> nobody thought of this. Like, how was I able to buy this? Yeah. <laughs> it's you cr- shouldn't let me get this. I was like, I, I can't eat this. Uh, oh, here's <laughs> your glass of uh, <laughs> broken shards of. I should. I was gonna say a cup of glass, but I fucked up. No, it's moving it's, on. Okay, summer break's coming up. Um, it made me spring break. Spring break. Sorry, mm-hmm. spring break is coming up, and it's made me think of summer break. And I've been looking for programs because like. I realize now that he's in school, there's going to be like this. First of all, this I already had the winter break where he was off for three fucking weeks. What? Now I'm staring down. Um, the spring break is a nine day break. Jeez. Yeah, they're like. So they're out of school. On like. I think they're like out of school. It's it's ridiculous. Like they're out of school on a Wednesday, and they come back that next Friday for like an intro. Mm-hmm. And then they like for one day, which he's not gonna do, because <laughs> like I'm like I'm not gonna take him to school on a Friday, just so he's like, I'm here for one day. Yeah, welcome back. I don't know. Like the, some of this shit's really fucked up. I'm uh-huh. hoping I'm I'm reading the calendar wrong, <laughs> but it's made me think about like, oh, what the fuck am I gonna do with this kid? For three months 
I mean, are there any, like, you know, I know that in other states the kids are going back to the mines. Maybe there's a mine he can work at. You know, a, like, if, if they had, like, some type of, you know, the... LED headlamps. Mm -hmm. Well, they're maybe. good because they got n nimble fingers. I mean, the dexterity of my, this kid is not mine worthy. <laughs> 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 I've seen him build a magnetile tower. Like, <laughs> black lung pop for sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I wish there was some type of work program where I could be like, oh, yeah, we want these kids to, like, stack bricks. I'm like, cool. He's great at stacking. Uh, yeah, like, take them. But I'll, like, sign, I, I'll sign a waiver. Sure. <laughs> But yeah, like um, I was looking at summer comp programs, and they're fucking expensive as shit. Yeah, I and like the, even like the free ones aren't free. Yeah, like it's like fifty dollars a week for like a uh, enrolling and paying for coaches, and I'm like, it says free on the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fifty dollars a week, which is still like not bad. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah, bad for shit to do in L.A. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's fine, but still, like I just. What the fuck? Three months. Yeah. What the fuck I, I don't know. Because they're like, Miles has started like preschool, but they're like, they do, you know, they're pretty good about like, they're keeping them in there as long as possible. You yeah. Know? And the little dude's still in daycare. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we could do. So that's the part I miss, man. Like TK and preschool, all that shit. It was great. Mm -hmm. Like there was no, like they were closed two days of the year. That was Christmas Day yeah. and New Year's Day. That's what I asked. Those are the only days that closed. That's what I asked. It's like, is it like a spring break coming? She's like, oh no, we, we're open. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, oh we're shit. We're open all the time. And like, I never even thought about like these, like the women that work there, like they don't, like they don't get a break from these kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I get why they're so short, short tempered. Cause you know, he's mine and I love him, Yeah. but I can't deal with this motherfucker every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> I, uh, this is a little aside, but yeah. So miles has been going to like preschool and it's, he's been, it's been great. It's been really cute to see him, you know, when he shows in the morning, they're all like, Hey miles. And like the teachers and the kids, you know, he has like friends and stuff there. Um, mm. but like, so the last couple of weeks he's been trying to sneak toys in to like mm. his like cars and stuff in his backpack. And today I was like, you know what? Let's let it, let's 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 see what happens whenever he gets a car in. So I let him sneak one in. And as soon as I picked him, it's like, oh, Mrs. So and so took my car home. <laughs> it's like, oh wow! I guess that's so he's why we shouldn't why we shouldn't take her cars to school, huh? That is fucking hilarious. I, I doubt she took his car home, but yeah. she probably took it away, and we'll give it back. It's it's one you know, we, she could keep it honestly. Yeah, <laughs> she, we got a lot of cars. We could spare one. But yeah, it was like one of those that's, uh, what do they call it, like natural consequences kind of thing. So oh, yeah, like, yeah. You got to learn. Yeah. You got to learn. Because he's, he's fucking terrible at hiding stuff. Because it's like, he always is like in his pocket <laughs> or whatever. It's like, dude, you're drawing attention to where you want me to don't want to draw attention to. Dude, I also did this thing with his bubbles when he, like, he wanted to take his bubbles to school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, you can't take it. And he's like, oh. And so I remember like three days before, I was just like, just put something in your pocket and I won't see it. Like, you won't see it. <laughs> And so he stuck the bubble in his pocket, but it's like two feet. <laughs> it's those big long tubes that you get yeah. at Target. So he sticks this thing in his pocket and he comes downstairs and I was like, buddy. And I just kind of sat there. And I'm like, Ozo, I can see the bubbles in your pocket. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I, I just like, I wanted to be mad at him. I understand what he's doing, but I nipped it right in the butt there because, like, the first day they start trying to hide something, they start trying to be deceiving. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to make them better at it. So, like, yeah, you know, I kind of was just like, well, you know, you did a good job. Like, I was only looking that way, but you can't. If I say no, it's a no. You know, like, I realized that my mom's approach made me like a fucking cat burglar, man. Yeah. You won't see, me, you won't hear mm -hmm. me coming, <laughs> you won't see me coming. You know, like. Right now, I have I have your Apple Watch. You didn't yeah. know I took it. Like a, sneaking a whole like a Lincoln Continental into school. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can, I'll I'll tell you right now. Like, I am not gonna be that type of person. Like, I want to make sure that I, my kid just feels comfortable. Talk. I these, I can hear a bunch of adults like <laughs> idiot. Uh, but like, oh wait, I am an adult. What? Mm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, <laughs> just heard a heavy exhale come out of the producer box. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's like I want to make sure that he knows he can come to me, and like 
you never want to hit your kids, but I think like maybe just once to set a line, <laughs> right? Is there once where like you just clock the shit out of them once so they're like, okay, this dude's bigger than me and steal yeah. the fear. Don't like make it a habit, but you know, you just are you want to define your kid's life the day they got hit, like before they got hit and after they got hit, mm. like what life was like yeah. <laughs> after this after the smack. But I uh hey, we're just speaking hypothetical. So hypothetical. Here, hypothetical here. Let's mm. say one of the kids maybe pushed the younger kid. Okay. And maybe <laughs> you accidentally knock into the older kid. And be like, oh, I'm sorry. I, did you not like that? Uh, I bet so and so didn't like that either. Yes, like that's yes. Uh, you know a hypothetical situation. Hypothetical, yes. Um, I've had situations where I've been told that my son was being unsafe, mm-hmm. and you know I thought like, oh man, like how would I teach him how to keep his hands to himself? And so like I would be like, maybe if there was a way for me to grab him by his shirt and lift him up like a 90s bully and be like does this feel good Mm -hmm. and see if he says no i'd be like maybe you don't want to touch anybody if you don't want to be touched but like you know i wouldn't do that no i don't think that would work but if i did Mm -hmm. if i did do that you know you would you don't want to grab the shirt from like the neck, you want to grab like a big handful from the armpit and bring it in, because then you get good leverage to lift somebody up. Yeah, and it doesn't like choke them like ah, like you see in the movies. You just, but that's if you know you ha- want to do that. Or I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like you could check. It's all hypothetical. All hypothetical. Mm-hmm. All hypothetical. Hypothetically, if your younger kid is screaming his head off, <laughs> and you're and you're on your last nerve, maybe you stick a finger in his mouth. <laughs> This is hypothetical. <laughs> hypothetically. It doesn't work, but hypothetically, it doesn't work either. Yeah, I, I mean, hypothetically, if your kid is, you know, kind of throwing a tantrum almost, screaming downstairs that he wants to go outside, he wants to play in the park, and starts getting real sad, you could mighty duck him by pulling his shirt over his head smacking him in the stomach so he bends over and then pantsing him and pushing him over <laughs> and tying his legs together <laughs> pant legs so when he's trying to pull his pant leg up first he can't getting more and more frustrated then trying to lift his shirt back down to see that his pants are tied in a knot and mm-hmm. then try as he tries to shuffle and get that untied is too embarrassed because he has no pants on downstairs to do anything that he gets even more frustrated that he goes up to his room that could work if that plan would even work and that's <laughs> hypothetical hypothetical this is not a hypothetical uh miles pants here the other day <laughs> oh shit like, full-on like dick out pants <laughs> and like i it, 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 you know of course it was funny <laughs> but i had to tell him like you can't do that bud. Like, like, you just can't do that it's not a cool thing to do in public <laughs> speak speak oh, yeah yes oh where were you <laughs> we were at a park uh, this is this is a different i know it's the same day but it, you know we're at a park and it was like i picked this park because they had a public bathroom and it was locked <laughs> so that was that was the same day the boys learned about peeing in a starbucks cup oh <laughs> shit it's like look dude your kid's hilarious this is their last thing <laughs> look i'm sorry <laughs> I know it's usually, I just told you not to pull your penis out in public. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is the option we get. You either pee on yourself or in, or in this Vinte cup. Well, shit. You got pants by a four year old, I believe? Or is that a three year old? No, no, he pants the younger guy. Oh, shit. No. He I thought he pants, pants you. Me. No, he pants the younger okay, guy. Okay, got it. Oh. For a second, I thought he pants you. And I was like, I got way too much pants for him to pants. I me. was like, what were you wearing? Where, and like, did he like did he jump off a tree and pull him down? No. Like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> but pantsing the little guy, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. still funny, but like we can't, we can't. It's like I can't encourage that because then he'll be just doing it all the fucking time. Yeah, there's. I would say that we've talked about it on this pod before. The hardest thing to do, especially when parenting boys, is not to laugh. Yeah, not to laugh. And I I remember, you know, Oza walks up to me and slaps me in the face and goes, hey, I'm being serious. And I'm, like, looking at them, like, about to lose it. And Shannon is 
bright red. <laughs> like, bright red about to, like, oh. <laughs> and, like, you know, he's he's starting to hear things at school and starting to repeat them, and it just sounds funny coming mm. out of a, you know, a baby. Like, it's still, he it still sounds like a baby. Sounds like a yeah. five-year-old. You know, like, you know, he's like, oh, man, how are we going to get out of this one, Dad? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> playing ninja turtles it's like he sees a boss oh man how are we gonna get out of this one dad i'm just like i don't know bud let's buckle in and i'll tell you right now i've been a victim of this uh my advice for all you guys like make sure you not don't play kid video games with your kids too early because i realize like i take it too seriously mm-hmm. and like you know we're playing ninja turtles and, you know, there's the, I'm like, yo, O's, whoever has the lowest health should get the pizza. <laughs> and it's I'm the sitting, cardinal rule of turtles. It's the cardinal rule. And, you know, because I got like 600, a 600 body count, this motherfucker's working, walking around with 30 body count, <laughs> you know, playing with the back. I guess I'm basically playing by myself. Mm-hmm. There comes a pizza and his shit is full because he grabbed the last pizza. So I'm walking over, and he's like, oh, a pizza. I'm like, yeah, I need to get the pizza. And he's like, oh, I got it. And I'm like, cool, I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> Fucking just threw the remote. I'm like, I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> Done with this shit. I, I used to drive, my, drive me crazy my younger brother would do that. I fucking hated him when he took the pizza and he didn't, and he didn't need it. When my brother did it to me, I wanted to fucking murder him. <laughs> and when my son did it to me, I saw this, like, line in my family like this line that came down <laughs> that he fucking crossed and i was like you know if hypothetically uh, you could grab him by his armpit <laughs> shirt and lift him up hypothetically i would have done it there but uh but yeah we uh that's our new tradition in the morning mm-hmm. is i get up a half hour early so i can get him dressed mm-hmm. we should leave the house by seven so if he's dressed and ready by six twenty-five, mm-hmm. i told him he, he'll, like, run over to the big clock in the hallway. He's like, that's 621. I'm like, all right, Ninja Turtle time. And then we'll play a couple levels of Ninja Turtles before school. That's pretty great. Yeah, so that's that's pretty – it's a nice way to st- – I, I was trying to figure out a way to get him amped in the morning because, like, he just hates school. Like, it's mm-hmm. not – it wasn't working for him. Like, didn't like his teachers, didn't like his schoolmates. And, like, he's not getting challenged enough, and he's getting punished for it. And – uh, you know he's getting labeled, and it's it's really it's really rough for him. And I found a routine now that works, and it's turtles in the morning, K-pop on the way to school, <laughs> and he's pumped. <laughs> he loves K-pop. I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. Hey, my dear. Hey, my dear. Every time, some, some, some. But there, I'll tell you right now, there is a word that I have to figure out in Korean that sounds a lot like nigga, because <laughs> they say it a lot, and I'm like, I'm like. Cause it'll be like he'll be like dancing with my girl, nigga. While stomp on worlds, I'm like, what the fuck? Th-? I'm like, I know these motherfuckers aren't just throwing out the n word. Like, <laughs> I I don't know what the fuck it is, but yeah, I, I I'll do some research. I'll come back to you. I haven't done like a deep dive, yeah. But bec- since like January and we started this this thing, so I'll look it up when it comes up again. Well, it turns out they're racist. <laughs> <laughs> I did a deep dive. Uh, uh, oh, what? You found it? What is it? Like I, like I did? So it's spelled, how do you spell it in English? It's Niga. In <laughs> Niga. It's N E E G A. No, the, the word N I G A as well as N E, no, N A E G A. Which translates to I in Korean were edited out of the song by the record label. Uh okay. Wow. So the <laughs> uh well I'm not in the Okay, so you see so. what it says what is on the bottom, the slang park? You click down on that. Slang park? Slang, yeah, that one. Pessimistic. I just don't see every single song using the word pessimistic. No. <laughs> It's I. Yeah. It's I. It's a uh, Russell Brand. No, no, the Indian comedian Peters. Russell Simmons. Russell Peters. Russell Peters. Russell, Russell Simmons. Russell Peters. Russell Simmons. <laughs> somebody was like, "Yeah, this is McDonald's, and there's this green dude. He's messy. Yeah, he's messy." He's like, "Oh, 
Uh, okay. He Okay. All right. Um, All right. Well, I guess well, I'll never learn Korean. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll get you to say it one of these days. <laughs> You're gonna slip up one of these days, Ben. It, it was in IGA. <laughs> I was referring to myself in Korean. <laughs> Um, well, okay, look, uh, this, I think that's a great, a great place to just stop for a <laughs> second. Um, we'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for Papa's Pulpit. Please stay, stay tuned. <laughs> Nika! back how's everybody doing i i'm tired okay <laughs> so moving, one of those moving things. for the last week is catching up with me. yeah i can tell i am i'm very tired as well but not as tired as you um i think we were supposed to do papa's pulpit but our producer just let us know that it is actually uh women's appreciation month yeah yeah was, like we had black history month that's mm-hmm. over so it's women's appreciation month Yeah, last year we talked about some influential women there's like stuff that you know influenced uh mm. arts and stuff that we liked and yes that was a really great segment that was a great segment that we did so mm. i think uh we can do wor- the the worst women yeah uh, yeah let's talk about now. some awful women i want to talk about th- i want to highlight the less talked about awful women mm. now uh, i just want to point out you i tried to propose the same idea last month and you guys shot me down pretty quick yes thought that was very (laughs) insensitive (laughs) and in the last 30 days i realized there's some women that need (laughs) need this segment (laughs) so i want to go uh i i i want to talk about some of the worst women that i've heard of that i know of uh, that i watch or that i might believe are terrible yeah so i think I was thinking about, like, in history. So I okay. went back and found, like, you know, because everyone, you know, you got your Black Widow murderers. Yes. Because, yeah, there's not much worse than murdering, right? That's true. There's not much worse That's than murdering. That's pretty much the top of the list. I mm-hmm. mean, it's not the top commandment, but it's, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> there's it's, things that are worse, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> not going to church on Sunday is worse than thou shalt not kill. Eating red meat on Friday. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's, I, I get it. But yes, um, yeah, I mean, you've got like, you know, Eileen Warnos. Eileen Warnos. They made the movie Monster about her. Serial yes, kill, only, she is terrible. Yeah, she was really bad. She was really bad. She, I, I guess, had a run life, started hooking, and then said, instead of putting out, I could kill these motherfuckers. I could kill these motherfuckers. <laughs> and she did. You know what? I, I remember watching uh, Charlize Theron portray her in the mm-hmm. movie Monster. And I was like, man, this woman had it rough. And then I watched the documentary, and I was like, ugh, this is a rough woman. <laughs> <laughs> they told two different stories. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's uh, not-so-famous Belle Gunnis, who was an immigrant in the turn of the century. Okay. She ran, like, a boarding house, uh, and she would, like, lure men into her house through, like, personal ads. Oh, uh, shit. And she murdered about 40 people. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. She got a she got a body count of 40. And then uh, what the fuck? She disappeared. Never got caught. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, Her house burnt down and they found dentures that were supposedly hers, but they never found her body. Oh, man. She outsmarted everybody. Yeah. She just killed a bunch of people, stole their money. You know, they found like a a room full of like backpacks. And, you know, it's like get the fuck out of here. All their their sacks. You know, that's hey, she's pretty bad. I was, you know, it's funny. I'm glad you did some of this history because I was just thinking about women that I think are terrible that I don't know, just like Amber Heard. Oh, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think she's awful. She's real bad. I just saw Aquaman 3. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I was thinking watching that movie. It's only two, right? They didn't make a third one. No, this is Aquaman 3. Yeah. Lane, you want to back us up? It's two or three? Okay, it's two. It's, it, oh, that's Aquaman 2? I that's thought it was how, Aquaman 3. No, that's how long it was. It, it bled into Aquaman This was not... Three. Th- so wait, which one? Oh, you know what? I'm thinking Justice League and then Aquaman. That's what's happening yeah, here. Yeah, Aquaman's been in a couple. So Aquaman three. 2. This is the Aquaman 2? Uh-huh. Boy, was this movie bad. Yeah. Like a new kind of bad. Mm-hmm. And Amber Heard, woof. 
Oof. Yeah. I mean, there's the Countess Bathory, who uh, <laughs> supposedly, you know, it's on, you know, it's historians differ, but like she would kill her maids and bathe in their blood to, uh, you know, maintain her useful, youthful look. Hmm. Now, I always thought that was like a myth. Well, I think it's, you know, as I was doing my, my little bit of research, like some. Like, did she take one maid? That was young, killer, and bathed in her blood. Well, and then it became it was like, s- like some people say it's politically motivated slander. Other people mm-hmm. said they're like, oh yeah, she killed a bunch of fucking people and bathed in their blood. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of these dudes back then had a lot of some high body counts, and like yeah. guys were going around. I mean, hey, guys, hey, yeah, the one thing guys do, they kill. Yeah, we kill. That's why women are, you know, it's 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 a rare breed. You know, yes, women who bathe in blood. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, looking into like modern times, there's like Candace Owens. Candace Owens is truly terrible. You know what was funny about Candace Owens? Because I didn't see her for a while. And then I saw her uh, doing like this college tour. And it was a couple, I think it was a year ago. I was like, whatever. She was doing this like tour, just kind of rolling her eyes on stage. And it kind of pans out and she's pregnant, mm-hmm. talking shit. So, what else is like, oh, wait, I forgot. I forgot all about this. She is married. Oh, really? She is married. Didn't her fucking didn't her uh her her husband and Kanye try to do some fucking Oh, oh yeah. They tried to launch something. Kanye was trying to buy the, like the pl- one of those platforms or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, like uh George mm-hmm. Farmer. Yuck. Oh, is it a UK guy? That makes sense that he would that makes sense. That's a, that's a match I mean, made it in all, heaven. It all fits. Yeah, it all fits. I think he's like from the House of Lords or something. Yeah, man, Candace has got a big ass forehead. Anyway, I got no room to talk about foreheads. Yeah, personally. yeah. Okay, I got. I mean, it fits your face at least. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, you like you got a big face. So, uh, and it's like a, a good looking face. I got a lot of face. You got a lot of face. Uh, but yeah, yeah, she's terrible. Um, I forgot this. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? Do you have anybody like in your personal life where you met like you don't have to say their name, but there's like someone in your personal life, female preferably, uh-huh. that was just awful that you're like, I hope I never see you again. Oh yeah, I was gonna toss mine in the list. Let's okay, see. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, first off, she's dead. Oh shit. Which is, you know, hey, people die. Yes. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> so <laughs> this this person and we were talking in between the break. We were talking about you know teachers and how shitty they could be. Rita McGrath was my <laughs> senior okay. year uh, <laughs> world history teacher. Uh, uh, she was you know she's on the list with Countess Bathory. Okay. She fucking sucked. <laughs> she was so mean and nasty uh, and like you know personally, I almost lost like my state funded scholarship because of like one test oh shit like, it was like one of those things like it was like a homework assignment and i didn't do it uh, okay so she's like at that day she made it after, out of like you know a hundred points it was like it ended up being like a chunk of my grade and i got a zero on it and uh it was just like oh like you know so she barely squeaked me out of that grade but like God she damn. like one day uh this one kid mark um like he was she was handing back assignments or something handing back tests one by one and saying <laughs> shitty things about each one so oh, he went up and grabbed his test, and he was like, uh, like he like, I don't know if he said something or he like his body posture was weird. She's like, oh, that's how it's gonna be. And she threw up all the tests in the in the in the air. And she's like, now pick them up. And she made this dude pick up all the tests she threw in the air while she sat at her desk. So like, yeah. She, also the same teacher like on nine eleven. <laughs> like this is this is my second period class. So in the hallways, like everyone's like, What did like we we are heard we heard stuff about maybe a tower hit the you know, a plane hit one of the twin towers or whatever. <laughs> and she starts out class, she's like, All right, so a plane hit one of the World Trade Centers. Open your page to page eighty three. It was like literally like world history was happening in front of us. <laughs> and she just fucking glossed right over it. Like every other class we had like, the little TVs were on the news. Yeah, we I, it all day long. Not in fucking Miss McGrath's class. Not in Miss McGrath's class. She's like, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> your life, you know, it is over. Anyway. Oh man, she sounds terrible. She was awful, but she's dead now. So she okay. can't she can't inflict her pain on any other students. Oh, that's uh, that's unfortunate, but I guess not. Really? No, hey. Good riddance. Good riddance. Good riddance. Jesus. I mean, maybe she make 
maybe the teachers liked her. Maybe she, they saw another side of her that the students didn't see. But like her nickname before we had her was the Wrath McGrath. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> like her name, like you know, the Wrath McGrath. Yeah, her name like held weight in the school even okay. before she got in her class. Like she just, she just, she was someone who I think she hated life and she hated herself and she put it out on all the students. God damn. Yeah. Oh man, I don't think I've ever had a teacher that I've ha- that like I ha- actually never mind. I just <laughs> thought of one. I just thought of one. But it's a guy, so yeah, yeah it's not skip it. Yeah, I can't. Not not this month. <laughs> what about uh? What about any uh? You know, we don't have to name names. What about any celebrity women you've worked with that are the worst? Ellen DeGeneres is a fucking cunt. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh my god, I don't like her. <laughs> um, but um, moving on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've worked with a couple people that um were just awful for no reason. Yeah. Awful for no reason. I'm like, oh, why are you so mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like i've seen like uh i've seen some people from a hit uh docuseries series family show mm-hmm. that was very mean to a lot of people that worked with me uh, for no reason and they're just doing their jobs i th- i you always want to believe women yeah you always want to believe women women and so the first time when uh there was a complaint about one of my my uh subordinates mm-hmm. I figured this guy fucked up. And then I got another complaint from uh, somebody. I'm like, okay, I can't have two bad apples in my group, my crew. Yeah. And then a third one was uh, this third person came to me and was like, I don't know what I did, but this woman was like yelling at me. And I'm like, oh, she doesn't yell. That's not true. Yeah. And then I did some digging, and I'm like, "Oh, she sucks. <laughs> oh, she just sucks. <laughs> she is. On, uh, she's on the worst. But not. I'm not going to name names right now. Yeah. Um, another name I'm not going to name is I was working on another show, and this uh, very famous singer, um, <laughs> <laughs> who was at the time married to the host of the show I was on, ah. was performing. Ah. Uh, she was stated to perform at like, let's say seven o'clock at night. Yes. She didn't take the stage until one o'clock in the morning. God damn. Uh, she did, however, drink two bottles of champagne in her dressing room. Okay. Uh, we had the whole audience loaded in. She made them all go away so she could have a private rehearsal. Uh, cool. And then by the time she actually did get on stage to perform, most of the audience had left. So we <laughs> literally had to get all the crew that were still there that not weren't behind cameras. Mm-hmm. We had to go in, take off her credentials, take off her walkies, and sit in the audience and watch this lady perform twice. That's uh. all she had in her. Ugh. Like literally, like the audience was fifty percent people that were getting like were like staff of the show. That's unfortunate. <laughs> that really sucks. <laughs> that was it. Was just like we're still here. We're still waiting for this person. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Who the same person who uh, on her writer I had to, at the, at the, at the, that my gig on that show is a long time ago. I was like the feel like I worked in the celebrity department. So whenever like celebrities would come on this show. Like, I'd go fill out the writers. Like, so, mm-hmm. you know, I'd buy whatever weird, you know, I bought like a mango for Shakira. It wasn't <laughs> Shakira, by the way. Oh, no, no, no. No, she was lovely. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, literally, like, the, this person's about to show up on stage, and I'm in her dressing room with the other talent people, and each of us are in a corner of the room filling up her humidifiers with Fiji water <laughs> because that was part of her request. And I was like, what the, where the, what am I doing? <laughs> what are we doing here, people? <laughs> Four humidifiers for each corner of the room, all filled with Fiji water. Uh, I love. The, uh, <laughs> no, no, do not say. Don't listen to our producer behind the camera. You're not going to sing any songs. You don't get the rights to that shit. No. <laughs> Let's just say Christmas wouldn't be the same without this singer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> we got it. All right. So you know, she didn't bathe in people's blood that I know of. No, but sometimes she might get the best of me. But <laughs> <laughs> I. <laughs> uh, I just. I mean, you know. I, I, I felt like I was living in a sweet fantasy that day. It, I, was, it was definitely a bizarre experience. Fuck, that's a heartbreaker. You know. <laughs> it's a, you hate to. You hate to hear it. You hate to see it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um, yes, I do. I do remember a teacher that I did not like. Uh, actually, now and uh, I'm not even sure if she's still alive because so- something happened. Like she went from being a very mean 
spirited, mm -hmm. evil, like almost witch like teacher to like having surgery and like walking on a cane and like not seeing out of one eye and like actually turning into a witch. <laughs> but I'm not sure. <laughs> Her devil's bargain ran up. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think uh, the, uh, the, she wasn't getting enough souls. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, she was an English teacher, uh, Mrs. Miss Krychek. Mm -hmm. I remember her from high school, and it was weird. Like, I spent a couple years hating her, and it wasn't until I graduated that I actually had a conversation with her. And, you know, she kind of laid out how she had a passion for teaching, and she just did not have patience for people who didn't want to be there. Yeah. And like that, like she said, my job is not to cater to you. My job is to take care of the people who want to be here. And I was like, huh. Huh. It looks like I am the cunt. <laughs> it looks like I'm one of the worst women in this Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, here's my question. Before we get too political, before we get too political, I'd like to nominate a finalist for worst woman, uh -huh. Caitlyn Jenner. And anyway, guys, uh, this has been Papa Don't Preach. Um, thank you guys so much. She did kill. <laughs> she did she kill did somebody. Slaughter somebody. She did kill somebody v vehicularly. All right. So yeah, as I was saying, guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning into our first episode of season five. We're back. We are back. Bennett is here. Thank you so much for coming. Big shout out to Blaine Pierre, our producer. Uh, Aaron Mostow does our music, and so does DNA. So, ladies and gentlemen. This is Papa Don't Breach, and we'll see you next week. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You don't get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that real that Caitlyn Jenner could be a real dick. <laughs>